Hello everybody and welcome. It's Dr. Galvin with a coronavirus update. For those of you who are new to the videos, my name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency physician and also run Vitality Medical Wellness Institute, which is a high-end functional medicine clinic here in Charlotte. We've been doing updates since the very beginning. Um, and so today we're going to focus on immunity. There's been a lot of questions about immunity and I'm also going to debunk a couple hoaxes, hopefully. As usual, we start with the numbers. Worldwide, we're at 20, almost 22 million cases and uh, almost 775,000 fatalities. Here in the US, 5.5 million cases, 172,000 fatalities. In North Carolina, 146,000 cases. I wanna talk a bit about immunity because one of the questions people have, now, you know, I think I'm probably not alone that I'm starting to know a lot of people have had COVID or post COVID. A lot of now, you know, at this point, in terms of the emergency room, I've seen lots and lots of people, but I don't get follow up in the emergency room. But but in my clinic, I do. And now we've had probably a dozen clinic patients who have had COVID at, at some point or other. Now, luckily, the majority of our patients have been, you know, or we keep them very, very healthy. So the symptoms have been minimal, but they've had it. So one of the questions I get asked is, can I get it again? And, you know, I've talked about this before that we don't really know the answer to that. We don't know if having the infection confers lasting immunity. We know that with SARS and with MERS, immunity lasted for at least a year, up to three years. But we don't really know what the deal is with COVID-19. Now, there's two studies that came out in the, just in the last week or so. One from China looking at 350 pa uh, patients and one from the U.S. looking at only 15 patients. Now, both of these are pre-released. They haven't been peer-reviewed, but I think that they're pretty reasonably looking through them. They're, they're well-designed, and I, I imagine that they're gonna, the, the conclusions are pretty valid. And, and basically, the Chinese study showed that six months after infection, people retained immunity to the virus, which is an important thing. They had a normal immune response at six months. Now, the study here from the U.S. was done at the University of Washington, and they looked at people that had mild COVID, meaning mild meaning they, they, weren't, they didn't need to be admitted to the hospital. So they, they were sick, but they, were, you know, they never had, had to come to the hospital. And they were looking at um, what we call kind of humoral immunity, meaning sort of blood test immunity. And there's sort of three things we can look at. One of them are, you know, the production of antibodies. We've, we've talked about some studies that have shown that antibodies seem to dissipate fairly quickly um, after infection. And so that raised the question of, well, maybe does that mean that you, you don't retain uh, immunity? But they also looked at memory B cells and memory T cells. And these are cells that when exposed to an infection kind of remember and are able to mount an immune response if re-exposed. And what they found that at three months, people had normal serum response along all those things, antibodies, memory B cells, and memory T cells, meaning that they had a normal immune response to the virus three months later. So presum you know, presumptively, they would mount an immune response and not get infected again. Now, they didn't look at whether or not people got infected. They were just looking at blood tests, and so they're extrapolating that. But small number of patients, not peer-reviewed yet, but let's just inject a little bit of common sense here. You know, what did I say? 20, almost 22 million cases worldwide. You know, we, this has been going on now for eight months or so. So, you know, even if, you know, 1% of, of that 21, 22 million um, people were able to get reinfected, that'd be still, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. And we're just not hearing reports of people getting it multiple times. We've heard a few case reports, but certainly not in any large number. So just based on some common sense, you know, if 22 million people have had it, if you were going to get reinfected after a month or so, we should have seen that by now. So I think that from the preliminary data, there's been some other studies that have shown that. I think probably if you've had COVID, you know, mild to moderate COVID, you're probably going to retain some degree of immunity. Now, at this point, you know, the Chinese study says six months. We don't know. You know, we've only been around for, for eight months. So I can't tell you, nobody can tell you if you're going to be immune two years from now. But it's pretty good. You know, it's pretty good news, I think. I, I'm, I'm heartened by it. Um, I want to talk about a couple hoaxes. Uh, I've gotten some messages from people, a video. There's this dude who's saying that, oh, you know, if you if you get if they're scanning you with an infrared 
uh, thermometer, essentially they're gonna cook your pineal gland. And the pineal gland is, is a gland that sits way deep in the middle of your brain that produces melatonin and, and, and some, has some important things. Well, that's complete bunk for, for a couple reasons. For one thing, the pineal gland doesn't live behind your forehead. It's like in the middle of your brain, way back here. So you have to get through all the bones, the entire brain to get to access it. Um, and what do infrared thermometers do? Well, they don't emit anything. They don't send out any kind of rays. Some of them have a light or a little laser for aiming, just so that they, you know where it's pointing at, but they don't send out anything. They're a completely passive device. What they consist is of a lens, that reads the, the infrared energy coming off of a person and then focuses it on a sensor in the thermometer. The thermometer does not emit any type of radiation or anything. It's a completely receptive device. So whoever's you know posting these videos and stuff, they've a fundamental don't understand, fundamentally do not understand how these devices work. It's getting that those infrared rays that are coming off you in heat focusing on a sensor that's inside the thermometer, they don't emit anything. So, and, and the pineal gland's nowhere near where they're shining it. So don't worry about getting your temperature taken with an infrared thermometer. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The other one I've been forwarded a few times is these Facebook posts that said, I'm an ICU nurse and all these COVID admissions are actually bacterial resistant pneumonias that people develop from wearing masks. Nonsense. Um, the other one was le it's Legionnaire's disease. Now, Legionnaire's disease and COVID, they do are they're very similar in terms of symptoms, but Legionella, which is the bacteria that causes Legionnaire's disease, is is really specific about where it grows. It grows in sort of standing water, and almost every Legionnaire's case is tra is is usually traced back to an air conditioning or a heating system where water stands and gets contaminated. It's not transmitted person to person. It's not gonna suddenly grow in your mask. And the mask itself is not a good environment for Legionella, it will not grow there. The same for bacterially uh, you know, resistant uh, um, pneumonias. You're, you're not gonna generate those from wearing a mask. It's, there, there's absolutely no evidence, no case reports, no science behind it. It doesn't even, from a, from a medical sense, it doesn't even make any sense. So again, I wouldn't worry about either one of those things. We'll keep it short today. I'll be back later in the week with another update. Um, we are gonna be doing uh, some more hormonal things. I had a little technical difficulty last week, but we'll get it out this week. As usual, if you like this, please follow us on uh, Facebook and on YouTube, subscribe, hit the little bell. We'll be back with more information as the week goes on. Everybody, wash your hands. Look after yourselves, look after those around you, look after your families, wear your mask, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.